Welcome to the Introduction to ePortfolios for Graduate Students. My name is Brianna Morris. I am a Graduate ePortfolio Assistant here in the studio. You can make an appointment with me through my tutor. Why ePortfolios? So we are shifting into an online world and employers are looking at these ePortfolios to see if you have the skills, experience, and talents needed for the job. They create positive and professional digital identities. They display skills, achievements, and learning, promotes ongoing reflections, showcases accomplishments and co coursework to outside audiences, and catches the eye and tells your story. Just a couple of statistics listed here. I'm just going to highlight this first one about the study shown in November 2017 that 68% of employers openly admitted to Googling possible job candidates before offering an interview. I wanted to highlight that because that was in 2017. It's now 2019, so I can only imagine that that percentage is higher. So there are two types of ePortfolios. We have your archive and your showcase. With your archive here at ODU, we use Google Drive, but you can also use Dropbox and OneDrive. For showcase, we use Wix and WordPress. And today I'm going to show you how to do WordPress. So here's an example of a Google Drive archived ePortfolio. Here you can see that everything is put together and organized in folders. So you have three different ePortfolio genres. You have your project and course, which contains the material created during a particular project or within a particular course. We have your program, which those are materials created multiple courses throughout your tenure here at Old Dominion. And then we have your professional, which is multiple courses or years as well as professional experience. You have your extracurricular activities, your awards and recognition, your internship experiences. And remember that ePortfolios our process and you will want to continuously work on them purposefully save materials to create artifacts you want to make sure that you're cre creating a public facing professional identity that accurately reflects your current work and objectives this is my ePortfolio my ePortfolio is made through Wix uh, we can go through that real quick Okay, so with my ePortfolio, I am a graduate student within the Creative Writing Program. So my ePortfolio is more geared towards publications. So as you can see right up here, I have a drop menu that shows my publications and my writing pieces. With my resume, once you click it, it opens up a whole new window into um, the browser. And then... Um, I have a personal blog, so if you click that, it just opens it up into a whole different browser with my personal blog. So we have an activity. Uh, we're going to go over one ePortfolio together. Um, during this, if you want to just write down three things that you like and would like to incorporate in your ePortfolio, we can't go over it uh, via screencast, however. This can be just a great activity for you to do on your own time. So we're going to go to this right here, the bit.ly slash EP showcase. And I want you to just scroll down to Old Dominion University. And since we're working with WordPress, we're going to go ahead and click Thomas Island. So this is Thomas's WordPress ePortfolio, and his is for his program. So this is a perfect example of a program-centered ePortfolio. He has his home screen with a welcome and a nice blurb about who he is and what he's done at Old Dominion. He also has a picture of himself. Right here, he has his ePortfolio and what he's done as an ePortfolio assistant. He has different menus, and he has drop-down menus for most of them, and then he has a contact page. So you can just write down three things that 
you like that you would like to incorporate into your ePortfolio, that would be wonderful. So what employers are looking for? So here's a list, um, just to name a few. They're looking for background information supported um, with the professional qualifications for the job, the creativity, is it well-rounded, a wide range of interests, a good feel for the job, the communication skills, um, and then the awards and accolades. So planning your e-portfolio structure, um, list some major categories you will want on your public facing portfolio and then list sub categories. So right over here, these will be your major categories. And if it was a drop menu right here, that will be your subcategory. And before we get into the WordPress activation part of the workshop, I just want to let you know that we are open Monday through Saturday. <laughs> um, and you can make your appointments via my tutor. Um, and then we are also located in the Learning Commons 1313. All right, so let's get started using WordPress. Let's go ahead and activate that faculty template. But first, I just want to let you tell you why WordPress. So WordPress is actually more user friendly and it runs between 15 to 25 percent of all websites. And then the plus about it is while at ODU, it's free for you and easy to export when you exit the university. So let's go into activating that template. If you can just go to your My ODU, and when you log in, you'll just scroll down right over here to WordPress. And then you'll just scroll down right here to this blank spot. Right here, you'll just do a valid site name. So for this ePortfolio, we'll just call it Brianna. Right. right here for a template and then you'll hit default templates and then you'll hit the default faculty template and right after that you will just scroll down and hit create new site Sometimes takes a little while. <laughs> so uh, as you can see, I do have a lot of e-portfolios. However, we will be hitting that last one and you'll just hit view site. And it'll just give you an idea of what it looks like. You may come up with this window. If you do, all you have to do is log in. So this is what it should look like for you. So what we're gonna do now is start customizing our site and we're gonna change the titles. Cause right here it says faculty name and we want to change that to my name or your name and then you have up here we want to change that or get rid of it so what i would like for you to do is go to customize at the top and then you will hit site identity and then right there you'll just change the your name And then you'll hit publish. Make sure whatever you do in WordPress that you are hitting publish so your work is saved. Next, we will actually go and see about changing our header image. So if you just go hit that back button and go down to header image, and you have the option to change your header right here. You can import files by doing upload files and then select. Or if you have a media library already, you can just select photos that's already there. Next, I will show you how to change the appearance. If you will just hit that X button right here. And what I want you to do is hover over that graduate student and I want you to hit dashboard right here on the side is your dashboard um you can go right through here to edit anything so i want you to hover over appearance and then go to themes 
right here is a million, well, not a million, but a lot of different things that you can change your site to. So if you just hit live preview, it will allow you to go through the website as if it's your own. You don't have to commit to it just yet. If you do want to commit to a theme, you will just activate and publish. But I suggest you go through as many things as you can so you can get a feel for what kind of e-portfolio you want and the look that you want. So hit that X. So I'm going to show you how to edit a page. And there are multiple ways you can edit a page. But with this particular template, um, you just have to go to your dashboard and go to pages and hit all pages. And right here, you can just pick whichever one you would like. And right now we'll just pick, let's just pick bio for instance. And then it'll pop up an edit page. And then right here, you can take this out and enter whatever you would like. And don't forget to up, hit update right here in this corner. No matter um, what you do, always update, update, update to save everything. Next, I'm going to show you how to add media. So let's say you want to add a picture to your bio. All you have to do is go to this plus sign right here. And hit image you have the option to upload media or if you have media already in your library you can just hit that add library and then you can go ahead so making your site visible let's make this visible however I do want to speak on that there are three ways you could allow search engines to identify you. You could do a password protected, or you can just do only registered users. So if you will go to settings right at the bottom and have hover over reading, if you scroll down into site visibility, It'll show you exactly what I just went over about allowing your search engines to index this site. Um, because you want your future employers to be able to look you up, I suggest doing the allow search engine. You could do a password protectant. However, with that, you just have to make sure whoever you're giving your information to that they have the password at all times. So once you change that, we'll just hit save changes. And if you only want a certain users to have access to it, you'll just go to users and hit add new. And then hit that email right here. And then you just type in the email and then you have the access to pick what they can do. Um, I always say subscriber. <laughs> So there are other WordPress options. We have widgets, plugins, we have the block option, import, export, and you also have the option to delete your site. <laughs> and I want to thank you for tuning in to this wonderful workshop. Again, if you want to contact me, you can make an appointment with me through my tutor, or you can email me at bmorris at odu.edu. For more information on tutorials, workshops, or any events happening in the studio, just follow us at ODU ePortfolio, and that's on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Thank you.